Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning Miss Darcy. Marta, how are you, my love? I'm good. How are you doing, doll? Good, thank you. Good, thank you. Welcome, everyone, to Awaken Positive Power with Darcy Marta, wonderful Darcy Marta, and myself, <laughs> Mima Godsell. Mima. Wonderful, Jemima. Wonderful, Jemima. Hello, lovely people. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we are here to discuss mental awareness, uh, depression, and suicide prevention through awareness. Uh, yes, some heavy topics, guys, but we're coming to you uh, from a friend perspective, just with our own um, own ideas, own experience, and just hopefully we'll be there to know that you are not alone if you are suffering or know someone who is suffering uh, or going through or in the process of you know integrating into their life or whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, every week is a different discussion. And we kind of go off the cuff here, which is really good. And we also, just before we do get into our things, there's a couple of things. Firstly, if you like any, if you want us to discuss anything, if you have any questions, like we're totally open to being inspired by you as much as we hopefully inspire yourselves in return. Um, my camera is about to fall, so hang on. Sorry. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? See, oh, by the way, we're 100% authentic. Yes. yes. <laughs> so if we, if we mess up or do anything, we're not here to be perfect. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And perfect's boring anyway. But anyway, um, so yeah, please, please write questions and any ideas or whatever you may want us to talk about below. Um, and then, of course, there is a disclaimer down below. Please read it, check in on it. And there is that 1-800 number for suicide prevention. If you know anyone or if yourself is in trouble and don't know who to reach out to, there's always someone there who can help you and guide you through um, this, the troubling stages. So no, you are never alone. That's so important, isn't it, Das? Yes, indeed, because that's the way you feel. Oftentimes yeah. when those big, bad, dark, overwhelming, gunky, sticky, nasty feelings get you, yeah. you feel like you're, what was it my English teacher said? Wallowing in a slough of despond. Oh, yep, I pretty much, that. pretty much. <laughs> you know, and I like to think of it I like to think of it. No, I think of it sometimes that, you know, like those old TV sets and probably if there's younger people listening, they don't know this, but the TV at the end of the day used to go into a circle oh, <laughs> into the dark. So meant TV was over for the day. And, um, yeah. That's what it feels like to me. It feels like everything's just gone woo, yeah. into a little dark hole, black a black hole, hole yeah. you know, yeah. and you just kind of sucked in and boy do you feel alone during all of that yeah. you know and we hope to um normalize this conversation around depression and mental awareness so we can hopefully all of us myself included because i suffer major depression um and we all do all at times we feel it but hopefully we can catch ourselves before we get right into that deep hole or know right. that there is a way out and not be afraid to talk about it because i think this whole shunning society is we've been brought into a society which makes it an illness and it's it shouldn't be treated like it's a it's something a taboo it's no it should be if, if it's something we can share and open up and talk about then i'm swear to god i know from my own experience that um my suicide attempts wouldn't have been so much more of the way out of it because you know the, sh the shame that comes with it being so depressed and being unable to reach out or feeling like i could not reach out so i think it's really important that Darcy and I are here discussing is to hopefully make sure you know that it's okay, even though it's not okay in the moment, that it's okay to be feeling what you're feeling. Darcy's um, promoting big emotions. I love that. When I say promoting, I mean like just saying it's okay to own these big emotions. And I love that Darcy's saying that because I have huge emotions and yeah. Darcy has big emotions too. And like, we're okay, even though we're a little cuckoo. <laughs> yeah, we're okay. Like, I mean, you know, when it's good, it's good. Uh, yeah, sorry, Dusk. Okay. No, 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 that's so good. That's good. That's the whole thing about mental health awareness is that, you know, you have your body, mind, and spirit. You know, you hear about that a lot, right? Body, mind, and spirit. But then there's this place of emotion. And, you know, I think that we should say body, mind, spirit, and feelings. Because your feelings are the gap or the bridge or the connection between the thought and the body, you know? So if you, every thought has a feeling, a small feeling, subtle is significant, as Shinzen Young likes to say, meditation teacher, amazing. Um, but that's really important to notice. So if every thought has a little feeling like, 
oh, it's a nice day, or oh, it's a terrible day, right? Or, oh, I got to wash my car, or oh, I washed my car yesterday, it's beautiful. You know, all those little tiny feelings are the bridge between the thought and the body, right? So if you're having bad feel, uh, thoughts, oftentimes those feelings you know, your body wants to defend against bad feelings and it does it with tension, right? So, oh, I am late. Oh, tension, 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 right? I'm late. Now I get to work. Oh, the place is a mess. Oh, I got a lot of work to do. Tension, 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 mental tension, mental tension, emotional tension, physical tension, right? So when we say body, mind, and spirit, when we're talking about body, mind, and spirit, we're also talking about the emotional aspect to that, you know? So mental health awareness is about recognizing <clears throat> your big feelings and how those big feelings affect your thoughts and affect your body. And it's kind of like this weird circle, you know, you have a, a feeling of, oh, I'm exhausted, I'm late for work. And it's because X, Y, Z, you know, we do the blame game and then we start getting these bad, you know, dark thoughts going. And then our bad feelings get bigger and then our body gets tenser, right? So I think that when we talk about mental health awareness, we have to talk about our emotional state our emotional and we have to honor it wow you feel bad today you know yeah, yeah. No, okay no. feel bad today it's okay exactly. you know you i think also uh, we've got to remember one of the best things that worked for me is reminding myself that emotions are energy in motion like it's it's going to change it goes through and we need to be able to rather than uh denying it it whenever we deny something we kind of put a halt on it and it wants to battle through even more so they tend to get bigger and bigger if what, we remember you, what that, you resist persists yeah, resist exactly resist persist and yeah. if you remember that energy is moving it's it's an emotion energy emotion then it does shift even though god help us in the moment i get it <laughs> that it feels like it's never going to shift yes Just reminding yourself it does it has to it will but it goes in waves. I always like to think of it as the waves at the ocean. And when you're exactly. going into that, you know, big feelings, they rise up, they crest and they crash, right? And it's just like, rah. And then and if, you don't, if, you don't let, if you put that boundary there, then that's going to end up being a tsunami. You know, like you're going to, if you're going to stop that, that water is going to come and come and come and come and come and just go, then eventually be way bigger if we block it. And we need to remember this motion needs to flow so that tsunami does not happen within right. ourselves. Right. Yeah, it's really powerful so that when we can, especially when if you're not in the moment of depression, to analyze this now or to get in touch with the words we're kind of saying, because then somehow your your spirit will come in in that moment of depression where you'll remember this. And it may not help, but it will it will spark that light. You'll just you'll know it in the background that it's there. You know, like we were talking about, like doing our little ceremonies in the morning. If you go and do it, that ritual you do all the time, just to get you shifted, reminds you that okay, this is this is going to be okay. I don't know, just something sort of, all these things, prepare yourself, have your tools ready for if you do start to slip into a depression. Absolutely, you know, and this is the whole thing because they don't teach it, <clears throat> excuse me, in school. They don't teach emotional intelligence in school. And I think that's so important. So the, maybe this is why I w like working with little kids so much because I'm really watching that human development every day and then I get to sense it with adults. So. A father said to me, a father said to me, I'm wiser, I'm sure. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I just wish I learned this when I was 20. Um, so I, you know, a father said to me, oh, she got really mad at me. My daughter got really mad at me the other day. She was mad because I needed her to go potty. I needed her to go to the bathroom and she didn't want to. And she got mad. And I said, okay, so what could really help her and yourself is to help her recognize her feelings by saying, I see you are really mad about this. Okay, you can be mad and go potty at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, you know, yeah. it's okay. I hear you. I hear that you're mad. I see that you're mad. It's yeah. okay. You can be as mad as you want. Be mad. Okay. Be mad and go ahead and be mad and go potty at the same time because you can do both at the same time. Yeah. And so she did it to me as well. And I'm like, I get it. Go ahead, go potty and be mad. So she goes, but I said, were you mad and went to the potty at the same time? I said, okay, that's good. That's great. Yeah. And I think, you know, just being able to acknowledge her feelings allows yeah. her to then validate herself. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell her, stop being mad and go to the bathroom. Yeah. Because well, that's, I, that's yeah, that's the form of suppression. That's like the deny. That's like going to create that tsunami. And even yeah. though it's yeah, created from someone else saying, like society, like they say, that's why yeah. I the shame to talk about it sometimes because the tsunami is going to come because society says that depression or that feeling is wrong or bad or you'll be okay. No, I'm not yeah. okay. So, right. like, so oh, what not. that little girl's going to do if I say, stop being mad, go to the bathroom, yeah. behave yourself. No, what she's going to do maybe is go to the bathroom, turn around, go out, and then hit somebody. Yeah. or throw something or do some bad behavior somewhere else yeah just what adults do i can't show that i'm mad i can't express that i'm mad but i sure can yell at that um poor mcdonald's clerk yeah i sure can yell about the fact that my chicken mcnuggets were cold or i can yell at you know the grocery store clerk ah, hurry up you know what i mean so we do we take it out in other places because we're not acknowledging it in ourselves you know, and it's just, it's a really important for our mental health yes. to acknowledge that we all have feelings all of the time. And sometimes they're big and sometimes they're overwhelming. And just like that wave will crash, they will crash, but we have to acknowledge it in order to do it. You know, it's, I, you know, I love that wave analogy. Like when you're swimming at the ocean, you have to dive under the wave, right? Otherwise, it just crashes on top of you. Yeah, you get, and you wake up, like, you wake up, you get out of it with sand in your mouth. You go, oh, oh, oh. Don't you see those people? You go, oh, poor love. <laughs> we all know it. We all know oh, that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you got this map. You go out all disheveled. Yeah. Um, I, okay, guys, today I'd like to talk about um, boundaries. Ooh, boundaries is a big topic. Um, but I find boundaries, and I know you said the same thing too, boundaries, I'm pathetic with boundaries. <laughs> I'm a people pleaser, and I find boundaries are meant to be for us to be safe, which is something I also learned. Boundaries aren't necessarily for the other person. They're for me to have a place where I know my cutoff zone with other people, which is something I learned, because I always thought that boundaries were more for so the other person doesn't cross. So more about being, I, I mean, it is both, but in terms of coming from myself to be protecting myself, that's a huge, that's a whole new thing. Cause I also go, Oh my God, it's about me again. Oh my no. Um, but boundaries, it's very hard because, um, I was just saying to you before Das, in my last relationships, I wanted to make sure everything was in their world. Okay. Yes, yes. A yes, yes. Pleaser enabling, um, a codependency, which also got me into abusive relationships and then the d depression, which is really interesting. Cause I'm now practicing, being honest with myself and it's very hard very very hard to go actually actually <laughs> no <laughs> really yeah. really really hard <laughs> you know, cool. it's really, yeah it, it's really quite empowering because firstly um i'm not going to hang on to it which bottles it up inside of me which gets that almost tsunami starting to happen because yeah. i burst out and then the person like years later or days later is going what the hell is that Mm -hmm. yeah to, so just to constructively say you know that's and it's okay i'm not trying to change the other person but mm -hmm. there then it's a choice to go okay now if you want to if you want to change because you know my boundary cool but like i'm not asking you to because i will take my boundary and i'll i'll honor it and walk away or do whatever i have to do to honor my own feelings and my own happiness really it comes down to happiness i don't want to be unhappy anymore mm -hmm. uh, in terms of in relations with other people so boundaries does what is your take on boundaries because that's a challenge it's, yeah. a, it's one of my big, it's one of my personal biggest challenges because being a, the youngest of four kids growing up, there were four girls in our house. So being the youngest girl of four, you know, I shared, we shared everything, everything. 
So there was no space. There was no, and back in the 60s, we didn't have this understanding of how to empower an individual, you know, they, they did on the college level. That was the whole point of the riots in the 60s. But um, kids were still, you know, you're, you were still following the old golden rules. <clears throat> Silence is the golden rule. Be seen and not heard, you know, do what you're told. And so I never had good healthy boundaries either because uh, I didn't understand that was a concept for a really long time. You know, my clothes were my sister's clothes. My room was my sister's room. Everything was somebody else's. So I was always fine sharing space with people. I didn't, I shared my food. And then I would meet people who were like, you know, you go out to dinner and you're like, oh, you want to get this and share it? No, I want my own. I'm like, wow, <laughs> what's the matter with you? I'm thinking like, what's the matter with you? You don't want to share it? You know, um, so that's always been a problem for me in relationships as well. Yeah. You know, uh, it's like, I always feel like it's not my place to tell someone how to behave. Yeah. You know, yeah, 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 exactly. Like, exactly. You like feel like, like no. I said, change the change. I'm not trying to change you, but I feel the same. I feel like my way I'm coming across is by changing them, but I'm actually not. I'm just saying that that's not what I like or, and that's okay. That's okay. Like, and you're okay to stay as you are I'm being just, for example, I use the workaholic example, being a right. workaholic, Oh, and that's okay. I'm not, I don't want you to change. I know that you love that, but right. I'm not going to have that. Uh, I need someone who's going to be available for me. So, and that's okay. And if, and it's sad if it doesn't work, but that's right. at least what we know now. We know now before we get years down the track and I haven't said something and you remain that way. And then suddenly I blow up and it becomes this unnecessary hoo-ha, which and I should have stepped up initially right now at the beginning and said my, set my boundary. But it is like I felt like I was telling him what to do, but I'm not because he can choose. Like they right. can choose whoever it is, they can, can choose whatever way they take. At least they know in the forefront what the boundary is. You know. I had a client the other day who said the problem she was having with her new relationship is that well, her old relationship she went out of, he was a he was a looky loo. He was a very big flirt her old oh. relationship. So he was always flirting with everybody. Didn't matter, you know, flirted with the grocery clerk, didn't matter who they were, what age they were, flirted with this person. He was just always about around and she always felt like she wasn't really there. Like he was seeing the whole world, not seeing her. And then her new uh, relationship, her this new person she's with, he was in a relationship where that was the way they both were and accepted that right so yes. he and his ex-wife they used to really like when they would go out they go oh look at that person oh she's pretty or he's oh how handsome he is so they were always looky loo to the other people as their relationship right. so now right. she's in this relationship with this guy Gosh. and it's her issue again and i said well it's gonna be up to you to say i'm not comfortable with that yeah you know I don't like looking at other people when I'm with you. I want to look at you. And it makes me uncomfortable if you're looking around the whole world at other people. And you've got to be able to tell that person. And if they can't come along with that, if they want to say, well, you are uptight, well, then you know you have two different sensibilities. Yeah. And it doesn't make him wrong or no. you wrong. It just means you have two different sensibilities and probably that's not going to be a symbiotic relationship. So yeah. instead of, you know, continuing with the relationship because you really like the person on all those other levels, it's going to hit a wall. It's just yeah. going to hit a wall when it comes back down to this situation. It just will. And being okay with saying, that's my issue. Yep. This is my issue. So as a relationship, you either help me with my issue or you stick to your whatever belief and that'll make us go where we go, right? It's a big risk. Yeah, it is. I think that's probably why a lot of boundaries aren't created with people. It's yes. Because of fear of, it may be just, be, as you said, just one thing and the rest is glorious, but that one thing, you will hit that wall. And it is scary to think, oh no, but then the universe doesn't give what, what we don't deserve. So if, if that's meant to be, not right then there is something better there 
so, yeah. know, I believe wholeheartedly now, like I understand, I get it, finally. And then it's like, if, if it's not, even though it may seem like it, if that one thing is the hindrance to to a, the finest relationship you've ever had, then it's not the one. Like if, that can, if that's an irk you, then it really, and as much as it, that's what I said last night too, I said, you know, if this means that we can't be together, that's okay. I mean, as much as it's going to hurt, it'd be really sad because a good couple, but I don't want, I don't, I don't want to sacrifice my happiness at, or I don't want you to either sacrifice your happiness. Right. I mean, like how uncomfortable would they be if every time they went out, she was feeling like, oh no, he's going to be looking around the restaurant or the bar or the, wherever we are, the park and everybody else, you know, and, and it was making her feel bad about herself. Yeah. And then he he would probably call her uptight all the time. Would I'd be like, stop calling me uptight. Like, you know, it'd be like this horrible, oh, and you know, she's not uptight. It's just a boundary. Her yeah, own or, or the worst part is she wouldn't talk about it anymore yeah. so if they did try to talk about it and they said oh i'm just looking or you know that's what i used to do with my ex-wife or it's not a big deal you know i just you know it's just something we used to do don't worry about it i think you're beautiful and if they just kind of dismiss it you know uh, it's like not a big oh. deal it's going to be inside of her yeah and that will turn into down. depression and that will turn into something negative like a, and it, year, over the years it'll turn into something really really hardcore to, to drugs or to escaping or to just that depression feeling or sh- something she'll blow up in his face and it'll all feel like out of out of whack you know for him yeah it, sometimes it turns into overeating it turns into then behavior that comes out in other places absolutely yeah. that's what we were talking about earlier with those big feelings yeah. you know yeah. those the the thought oh he's looking at women again he says it's no big deal it makes me feel bad i feel fat i think i'll have a dessert yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> funny, or whatever i think <laughs> I think a glass of red wine and some dark chocolate would be really good right now. <laughs> yeah, you can look at those girls. <laughs> be over here. Drunk. No, sorry, not, not promoting it, guys. But it is, it's, <laughs> please don't don't quote me on that. Um, yeah, it's it's amazing though how challenging it is. I mean, even with um, workspaces. To I had a recent job where um, the my boss gave me a little bit of attitude. Actually, it was quite strong. It was quite unnecessary. And instead of usually I'd be like, okay, and go and probably have a tear in the bathroom and then come out and go, okay, it's my job. I don't want to, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. It's, I don't want to create, be, be the person who goes, no. Um, I stood there and I was like, I did go to the bathroom. I did have a tear, but I came back out. I thought, you know, this is not, this is not okay. So I actually went over to her and said, you know, I'm not able to learn anything from you if you start yelling at me for my questions. And I really don't respect, uh, I don't appreciate your disrespect when I ask questions. I'm not stupid asking you questions. I don't know. And I, I, I'm shaking my knees and going, oh, my God, oh, what do I do? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> what do I do? And she ended up going, you know, I'm so sorry. And and then she came up the end going, are you okay? <laughs> and just like ma- making, not even realize, recognizing her behavior. And, right. and there's a whole different level of relationship has achieved now, working professional relationship. And now I feel empowered by it. But also she has also been more aware of it. And if I didn't voice that, and it's right for me to voice it, and she recognizes it, that it was right. So it's like, then it would have continued into a, a bad co, co-working co relationship. Yes. And I would have left with the half. I mean, that day, that day I was about to walk out going, I don't need to be paid this amount and be abused like that. Right. And instead of just walking out and going, oh, effort, I took the balls and my balls and I just confronted her. And it was really quite empowering, you know. So it's, even though it's challenging, the worst thing that can happen to guys is that you lose it. Like, as in you lose the man, you lose the job. I mean, I know that sounds pretty radical, but that, that you can get you can get another, isn't your self-worth and self-happiness more important than those, than feeling ripped apart or dis, disrespected or dis, degraded or whatever. I think self-worth is so much more uh, worth being having your boundaries than not. Do you know what I mean? Well, you know, and I think, well, that's the whole big issue. <clears throat> it's, It goes back to that whole self-love thing where you go, okay, so if I say this to this man and it dissolves that relationship single again, Mm -hmm. right? There, Or if I say this to my coworker and they don't come along and they Mm -hmm. don't talk, well, now I've put it out in the, in the air. And now that tension is going to be there until it gets resolved and I'm going to be responsible. And it's like, that's okay, you know, yeah. to make that okay. That, yeah. that, comes, mm-hmm. sorry, that comes with the 
um, the wants and the needs. Like every time we need something is that desperate yearning uh, survival. Uh, without it, I'm going to die. Oh, I'm going to die. I can't, I can't live without it. it. Just I won't use the job. I'll use the, a, a relationship as an example. The most unhealthy thing you can have in a relationship is needing the other person. It should be that you want. So without them, you're okay still because it's a want. It's beautiful. You don't need them for your survival. You don't need them for your self-confidence. You don't need them for your uh, quality, for your qualification in life. You know, you just want them because they're cool. They make you feel good. You have fun. It's such a different perspective than to, and, and that self you have without, with the want, you're still whole without them. You don't lose yourself. It doesn't matter if they're there or not. Not to, uh, not to say it doesn't matter because, of course, it, it, there's a level of relationship, but you're going to survive. You don't lose that whole your self-worth because you right. still have with or without them because you want them in your life. You don't need them for that self-worth. Right. Or that or your identity. Yeah. Thank you. you thank know. you. Exactly. Your yeah. Identity. You don't need them for your identity. It's like you're you are yourself yeah. next to them, you know, and that's, you know, you you have to the nice thing about partnerships is the other person balances you or brings a strength that you don't have you know and you can you know work to support each other but if part of that support falls away you you're still strong and can still stand and that's it's a really important belief inside ourselves that we can still stand that we have our support in places it's something you know i was talking to my son about too about setting boundaries and i said you know if if this situation is causing anxiety then this situation is not worth it yeah yeah and you have to be either you have to be okay with saying i can't um continue with this situation this way I need to look at it differently. So, you know, he was, he's very nervous about COVID and going back to school and being surrounded by people who uh, maybe don't care as much about the virus as he does. And so I said, all right, then you have to set your boundary with that. And because that's important to you and you decide how you want to manage yourself in this. Yeah, you exactly. Know? And yeah. that doesn't have to create that's just a matter of self-respect for each other. Like you can still yeah. say, okay, that's, it's a shame, but, at, but right now I, I have to walk away or, you know, but there doesn't have to be a hate. There doesn't have to be an anger. There doesn't have to be anything negative about owning your, your self-worth and your, your self, uh, your, your boundaries. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, doesn't create, it doesn't have to create this ruffle effect or, which I think as humans, we think, oh my God, I'm going to create some, some tension or, things are going to go haywire but that's it doesn't have to be that way if we stand strong and go I'm not being offensive to you but that doesn't work for me right now and I love you still but right now I'm just going to have to walk away and you know hopefully we'll see each other soon or whatever it may be that's what I'm really learning from my past relationships or with my drug addiction is that I don't want to fall into this again I'm never going to fall into it again way beyond it but I'm learning I'm a child relearning my behavioral skills and it's and like COVID as I said with that isolation by myself was great healing but now I'm realizing my healing was not with people around me and having now to put my healing my I was awesome by myself woo! but now I'm going with people oh my god <laughs> I'm falling apart going wow I don't I really the healing I did I'm not going to undermine and say I don't feel like I'm healed at all but I'm going to say my healing was totally different because I had it all in my head had it yeah. all in my heart but I had not put it into face-to-face -face practice and having to now go okay I have to voice my no no, I don't really. Yeah. And that's really scary. And, and find, find the confidence and strength to go. But that's, you know, usually when you do the other person in return, is like, Oh, cool. They, it's not a big deal. And I, I'd be the same in return. It's like, not a big deal. I actually respect them more because there is, there's a no there rather than, than someone just going, okay. La, la, la. And when you know they're uncomfortable with it. Right. So it's a strange sort of phenomena. Um, but it's and it's really interesting how big we build things up in our head and, not, and the other person's like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's like, you're like, oh, oh my goodness, God. it really bothers me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, may, yeah. it comes down to um, us as humans putting everyone before, well, generally putting people before us. I think mm -hmm. that we've got everyone else, especially empaths, we've got to make sure everyone else around us is okay and that we forget about ourselves and making sure that we, 
or not making sure it's it's delighting in the fact that there is peace and a flow amongst each other and so we try and make sure that happens for us all and some people aren't on that flow that day and that's okay but that but the empath is like going oh my god but i want them to flow with me i hope they're okay and worry 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 but it's okay that put that boundary going well if someone doesn't want to be on that flow today that's okay i'm still going to flow and that's another boundary and that other person go cool see i have a great freaking day <laughs> you know, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter we go without you, you know? yeah go be happy yeah, suck. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Staying high five, yeah. It's yeah, crazy. I have a I have a hard time with the empath thing too because I will I'll walk into a room and I know what the feelings are. Like I yeah. can feel them at the door. Yeah. Yeah. You walk yeah. in the door and you're like, hmm, okay. La 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 la. I'm <laughs> gonna yes. deal with this today. Okay. Is this mine? Is this yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. No, wait, I gotta, you know, kind of yeah. find my footing there with it sometimes. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm really bad at this. This is something I'm terrible at setting boundaries. And it's something that I have recognized over the last five years, uh, even more as I get older, how boundaries are so enormously important yeah. Yeah. it's so enormously important because then you have to be able to when it really counts stand up for yourself and advocate for yourself in things like uh medical care mm -hmm. right yeah. like you have to be able to say this is not okay this is okay yes i want to choose this no i don't want to choose that if you have no boundaries it gets harder and harder to do that with people yes. that are in areas of um you know expertise you know on the pedestal doctors you know lawyers whatever yep. bosses yep. you know all those kinds of things so as i get older i start to see where my boundary setting is so weak yeah. in so many places and yeah. and so i've really started to just say okay what can we do now to change this boundary situation yeah. Yeah. takes me a long time plus i'm a scorpio so here we go with the astrology thing so scorpios have a tendency to go inside and go hmm is it me what am i doing here what is river you know we have to like kind of suss it out underground a little bit and then come out with an idea well that's um, why I, you and i relate so well darcy i'm being pisces as well I, I totally get it like we just we'd rather not uh i don't know yeah we go inside and go hang on i don't know yeah get all confused and worried and concerned while well, we have we just want to make it loving just want to make everyone love each other and right. every case okay, so we might sacrifice our own well-being our own self-worth by not creating a boundary and just going with flow which is not what we want to do anymore is it us we want to stand strong within ourselves and know that it's okay yes like, that's correct yes 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 absolutely you have a little accent there is that yes oh, <laughs> come, come and go sorry they, and i don't know what they are <laughs> they're the not accurate they're not accurate they are just whatever they are fangs <laughs> <laughs> out <laughs> your blood yeah we are both uh, performers okay people <laughs> that's, that's right and it just kind of you know comes out you can take the girl out of the theater etc um you know and i think this would be you know this is like really important conversation to have with teenagers so mm -hmm. when i talk with teenagers you know i like to make sure that where are they at with their boundaries with their friends Yes. You know, boundaries with friends is really important. You know, my son is um, half Asian. And so living in a mostly white neighborhood, you know, sometimes his friends would make Asian jokes. This is when he was in middle school, right? And they would make Asian jokes. And, and I'm like, well, he was telling me about it. And I said, well, do they realize that you're Asian? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. Yeah, they think that, yeah, but it doesn't matter. You know, they kind of joking along and I'm like, you know, one of the pack. So it's like, I should be laughing too. I'm like, well, have you ever told them that you think it's offensive? He, oh yeah. I'm like, no, I mean like really told them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. one thing to say, hey, that's an offensive joke. 
and be laughing at the same time. Yeah. Right. Cool. Right. Cool. Right. And so that, yeah, it was, it was really tough. And then he started to realize that, you know, after he really looked at that, there were certain friends that he didn't actually really connect with and really like, and I'm like, well, that's really important. You know, sometimes you go in around, along with your group and their yes. behavior or what they talk about is not what you like. Well, I'm sure that's a lot of how a lot of uh, uh, bullying occurs with a lot of the gang bullying is, you know, half of them, majority don't really want to be continuing to be a bully. I mean, bullying is long to, is, is a long session of, of attack, personal attack. And I know a lot of those people do not want to be a part of it because of that, that, that boundary not being there or the fear of losing the group or fear of losing your yes, cool being friends. Kicked out and then you yeah, become yeah. the, yeah, you become the object of the attack. Yeah, right. Yes. You know, it's well, easier it's, when it's somebody else. Those boundaries are not placed there where they're, where, as you said, it's so important if they were introduced to the, the joys of putting boundaries, you know, the self respect you can have with the boundary as a teenager. I'm sh maybe there wouldn't be as many, there'd be a lot more people who would stick up for this themselves and say, no, that's not okay, mate. And then maybe that bully, the, the prime bully would stop and go, oh, or it you know, mightn't get so bad or whatever. We can stop the bullying. I don't know. I know that yeah. I was, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. there you go. Oh. What were you gonna say? No, I was I was bullied in when I was about twelve, and mm. I no boundaries, no boundaries. Right. And my friends didn't want a girl to come to my video night, and um, so I I, I wanted to come because I invited her. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. But they were like about ten girls, you know, and we were at that twelve year old almost coming to fourteen. This girl oh, was horrible. Horrible. And then um, so they sort of persuaded me because I and I was like wanting to please everyone at my house to get on the phone and tell this girl that, that it was cancelled. So I did, and that was cool. We had a great, great weekend together. And then on Monday, I came to school, and all of them never spoke to me. We're talking about it. Yeah, it was six, no, that none of them spoke to me for six months. That suddenly I had lost all my friends. Six months, none of them spoke to me. I went up to my friends and said, morning. They just turned around. And I was like, what the hell has happened? And this other girl, the one who was told not to come, I don't know who told her out of our group. I still don't know to this day. I have an idea but they all, she had a lot of power and they all turned against me. And so I had to, I, that's when I first attempted suicide was because they, and they asked me to do that, but I didn't have a boundary to say, I invited her guys. It's my house. It's my party. Yeah. So I was a people pleaser and that could have been so stopped. The whole situation could have been stopped and that could never have happened if only I had had my boundary. You know, if right. I had, I don't even know if I knew what boundaries were there. You know, no, you like, don't. As a yeah. kid, you really don't, unless your family is really clued into that idea. Yeah. You know, that's, and those are the people that usually get taken advantage of as the ones yeah. that don't have that strong boundary or sense of personal identity. You know, yeah. it's the ones that have that great sense of personal identity that can either command the situation or, you know, yeah. pick yeah. out what's best for them. I remember also I had a friend, I had a friend who, um, he was gay and he had a lot of straight friends and his straight friends were always making gay jokes and, and he was always laughing along with them. And then once I remember everybody left and I asked my friend, I'm like, are you okay with joking like that? Are you, is that okay with you? And my friend was like, Oh, they don't mean anything by it. And I'm like, yeah, but are you okay with that? Really okay with that? If they don't mean anything by it, but do you like that? Are you all right with it? And it took him a while to really think about it. And then later he said, oh, I'm so glad you mentioned that to me because he didn't have those kinds of boundaries in place because yeah. of his yeah. friendship. Yeah. With yeah. Those. And so he, what he did, I think, is he went one by one to people and talked to them one by one about That's it. What I did. Mm -hmm. I wish I knew that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. I'm like, oh, I don't know how to <laughs> that do that. Takes in itself, like to to want to yeah. go one because then that one could go and say, oh my god, they just they, they don't. You wait till he comes and tells you this. Like, and then it can be even worse. And so, but good kudos to him. Kudos to him. Like, I mean, that would have been a huge, learning. huge because it was like, really, learning. yeah, that was a big group of friends to suddenly go, wow. Uh, you know, and I mean, I really try to instill this with my son. I, I always get really surprised when he tells me how great he is with his boundaries, you know, and sometimes he's just really not. Yeah. Um, 
but he will work his way through that and so that makes me really happy because i'm like he's a pisces too isn't he yeah. So I relate to him having trouble. Hello, Kitty. Everyone, yeah. this is Butterball. This is Butterball. <laughs> I know. Butterball, Butterball has no boundaries. <laughs> no boundaries. Know, look at this. It just comes in. But he, he's called Butterball because his ass looks like a Butterball turkey. It's really big. <laughs> I know when I first got him, I'm like, what's Butterball? Because in Australia, we don't have Butterball. We don't have turkeys. We don't have Butterballs. And then it was it was Thanksgiving and we're at the, at the, at the at stuff, Safeway or whatever. And uh -huh. then my ex picks up big turkey from way down the other side and goes hey Jemima I turn around and I was like oh, Butterball <laughs> <It's> like, <"Yes." laughs> anyway Butterball is he's going right now he's about to bite me because he's got a boundary going don't make fun of my name right <laughs> he's got a boundary I'll let you have a look Kiko. see look there's no boundaries no yeah. boundaries. <laughs> just cushy little bit though yeah and, um yeah awesome awesome um that's a, it's so just, do you feel do you feel better about being able to talk to people now about what you need and how you need things oh god yeah well it's still very new and i said that yesterday i've only just really practiced it with um uh with my boss and with this this friend i have and yesterday with the friend i have because it's a it's more of a personal relationship i was able to say well this is new for me this is really new for me and i'm a little scared and i'm a little i, I i'm nervous about being just speaking my truth because i don't want to lose you you know but i also don't want to ever be put put myself in an unhappy place again which is uh, which it's it hurts the other person too like why didn't i say that at the beginning you know why didn't it would have been so much less of an impact if i was on my boundary at the beginning so it's very empowering but you know where this has come from thus is hmm. my self of um my self-love challenge because ah. i'm finding, yeah i'm finding and guys if you don't know i'm doing a self-love challenge working it out along the way so I'll, I'll be able to talk about it, the structure of it later when i work it out myself um but yeah, I'm finding you're know, doing my morning, morning, mirror morning mantras and being conscious of changing my negative thoughts, which have that feeling. Um, it's I'm putting my own boundaries up within myself. And then also that self-love is, is creating this, this uh, profound awareness of lack of self-worth. And I want to change that. And that takes action, active, conscious action to change that self-worth. And I, that's only up to me. No one else can do it for me. And it right. is. It's a struggle every day but a struggle in a constructive exciting way because that exhaustion of going oh my god um has now look what i've enabled it's enabled me to put up a boundary which actually is working in my favor because this person for example this guy yesterday is now willing to see how he can work it around me and if not that's okay it's going to be sad to say goodbye but if if it can be worked out sweet but that's up to him but now you know it should have shifted his reality and without knowing it wouldn't have changed so it's really yeah. the self-love um, challenge is amazing in terms of really uh, bringing to the forefront the lack of what I have for myself. And I don't mean that in a negative way because right. I can consciously shift it to change it into a positive thing. And hence why the boundary is like, I don't want to be stuck in that place again where the, I, it takes 50 each person takes 50% each to create that drama, that relationship. So my 50% is no, I'm not going to get myself into that ever again, ever again. And so here I am. And so it's really quite, yeah, it's self-empowering. I feel, I feel like I've got um, a backbone for myself. I got my own back for the first time uh, rather than feeling like, oh, you know, crazy and like, I'm going to lose everything. Oh, well, if I lose everything, I have myself. And that is all I come in with and all I'm going to leave with. So Hey, I better hang on to myself. Hey, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> it's quite, it's a new, new way of living, but it's really quite exciting to, and, and it's not to say it's all happy. No, no, it's not. It's actually most of the time I'm feeling kind of, kind of wacko and miserable and blah, but, um, but there are moments where like for the boundary being set yesterday where I go, Oh, Oh, okay. That, that sort of little crisis I had this week of feeling the lack of self-worth is so, and then consciously changing those thoughts is really playing an effect on my life long term so eventually that mm -hmm. self-talk and negative lack of self-worth will, will be a habit broken and the forefront will be positive self-worth and self-love that's great i think you know that's always the, that's always the key to everything is this concept of self-love or love in and of itself you know um i think whenever i do uh a hypnosis session for somebody, you know, I always use that Louise Hay loving treatment uh, prayer at the, at the end because she did last week. 
How did it go? You're meant to do it every day. Did you do right. it every day? Oh, we're going to talk about that. Um, oh! <laughs> no, no, no. It's really profound. So, yes, that self-love thing is what's underneath everything. Everything. Every behavior. It's all about, it co all comes down to self-love. If we loved ourselves as much as we love our cars. Yes. Right? take care of ourselves as, as well as we take care of our cars or our houses or our pets or our garden or wherever we are really, you know, focused with our energy where we put all that loving attention and, you know, fine detail back to ourselves. And then we can radiate that back outward. It's not to hold on to it. It's not to not say to myself, you know, nobody come near me. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's more about, I can have a more loving experience in the world. Yes. If I learn to love myself first. Yeah. And then it doesn't, don't you think it takes out that need? Like, so yes. long as I'm happy, it's okay. I, if I'm happy and then it can come out tenfold and more honestly, because you don't need their recognition or their, them to come back and go or give you something in return. You're just loving them for the sake of giving that love. Cause you can, but right. and you Way still feeling just as whole rather than going love 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 and then walking away going oh, Give me, they, yeah, yeah. they didn't talk to me back or whatever it may be powerful 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 it's really powerful it's really important and it always goes back to that idea of being i mean a visual if you need a visual image of being on an airplane with the oxygen masks yes you put on yourself first before you put it on the person you're taking care of or you're not going to be able to take care of them yeah exactly right so I think that's that is so much the, you know, the visual physical idea. Put that oxygen mask of self love on yourself first, and then you can take care of the rest of the world in a stronger boundaries, easier living, give and take, where it's not always this constant struggle, and hiding your feelings and, you know, having to deal and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's me i have to deal <laughs> with it yeah how do you get along Das? hey Das, yeah. i didn't ask before we started hmm. can you pull a card or something oh you want me to pull a card oh, today yeah. of okay course. i don't know sorry sorry guys i usually i tend to forget to ask Das, and i just spring it on her so i'm sorry but if you if you are able to we love your cards and i, do I just, you yeah i love them and they, they seem to be so fitting each week that i just go oh my god like connection so I know she's thinking which ones, which ones. I know, right? I'm thinking, I'm thinking about it. Um, animal cards. Okay, animal cards. It is. <laughs> sorry, didn't have much choice. Oh, a boundary. I'm not sorry. I would like the animal cards. Thank you very much. Okay, well, I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna do the angel cards today. I'm gonna do. Um. The yeah, medicine cards. Beautiful medicine cards. Yay. Jamie C. They're amazing. All right. So, so they're a little different than the um, angel cards. Because um, something's going on with the animals in my neighborhood today. Oh, there you yeah. go. Something's there going on with Butterball. Being so like boundaryless. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. So the air is yucky. It's a full moon tomorrow night. Two, by the way, guys, uh, tomorrow night. It's the blue full moon last, and it's the second one in, in Aquarius for the month, which is, it happens like every 10,000 years or something. Like, well, not that long, but like it hasn't happened for a while. Um, so it's, and it's meant to be that ah, big, big, big moon. It's so beautiful. So yeah. everyone, don't forget to time to let go of everything that's not worth working for you. And also Aquarius is the humanitarian, the collective energy. So whatever you can do to better your collective, the people around you, the world, us as a person, um, or doesn't work or what you haven't been doing, maybe take out those plastic bottles and recycle them. That might be a good idea. Let's all do that. You know, so something, something we can do with this beautiful Aquarius blue full moon. Happy full moon, everyone. Tomorrow. So I'm asking our cards about boundaries. So I'm going to talk to our animal cards about who can give us a great example of um, boundaries. Okay. <laughs> and so uh -oh. I'm just asking. I'm just asking a second. I love these talks with us. I do too. I really, you know, I find, I just find so much. 
in our discussions, you know, as I, and you know, thank you, Jemima, for going through so much and sharing what you're going through with everybody, you know, because your learning process, putting your learning process out there for all of us is a way of saying, you know, we know that we're always in a learning process and sometimes our lessons are so hard on ourselves and then you know we make those lessons hard around us but you know kudos for you for staying aware and saying i know i am like you and you are like yeah. me and exactly. we can normalizing it normalizing it. if i have to be the the experiment i don't care i'm, I'm over caring it's if this is beneficial for me sorry guys <laughs> <laughs> it's beneficial for me more so than you probably but it really is so i mean i don't care being warts and all hang it out if you don't like it oh well that's cool i'm actually getting healthier and healing and i know some people will really appreciate this so thank you and thank you for being a part of this Dars. like you're part of my my healing as well because when we talk that's so much therapy done every saturday and awareness brought to my sensibility which is just profound and some things i never would have gone happy enlightenment with without our discussion so i honor you so much Dars, and being, oh, being my you. partner is partner in crime should i say with this and partner in authenticity um it's just such an honor so i really do i take such pleasure with you being here oh my yeah thank you it goes back at you so my um self-love challenge is gonna start yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, it's going to start good. with the new moon on September 1st. And I kind of knew that August was going to be really That's challenging, true. really exhausting for me. And as much as I tried to do that, and that's the time to do it is when things are challenging and exhausting. Um, that's okay. No, don't, don't, none of that. Just you do, do it when you, you do, do it. it. When you do it. So I said, you know, I'm just going to be easy on myself and say, if you're not present with it, then don't do it. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's I, okay. That's yeah. okay, people. Like you can, because it's worth, isn't it worse to then not do it and go, ah, yeah, and berate yourself? Oh my God, which we do. Oh, like, I missed it today. Oh, it yeah. sucks. I'm totally off my yeah. thing. And the whole purpose. So do it. Be honest with yourself and say, it's okay if I don't do it now. Like, oh, right. well, okay. Let me do it when I know I will have the time, strength, patience, and awareness to do it. You know, or yeah. just, you know what? Maybe I'll do it when I'm really, really, really tired and I <laughs> really can't take it anymore then yep. that'll be a great time to do it because it'll recharge me. Um, and, you know, sometimes you have to let yourself, you know, sometimes you have to let yourself get into some muck, you know, some deep, you know, the got to get into the black hole so I can dig myself out again. Rock and, bottom. Yeah. yeah. And then maybe I'll let this um, be the way I pull myself out, you know? Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. And speaking of the dark hole, I pulled bat. Ooh, okay. Now, Beautiful. I, re I really like bats. And speaking of the full moon and uh, et cetera, I love bats. Did you know that bats are great mothers? Oh, okay. They That's take good. really good care of their babies, their offspring. Bats. Who would have thought, right? <laughs> so you know, like. What a funny idea. And then I heard this, uh, an NPR story about bats the other day where there's a certain type of bat, just one type of bat that the babies um, babble like human babies. <laughs> they have it all recorded that oh the babies God. actually babble. So their language, they're learning their language. It's oh like God. pretty amazing. And I think that's so significant because we always think us humans are so, you know, elevated, but so advanced. Yeah, we're not. I think we're the we're the, the the least advanced of the animal kingdom. No offense to us. We've got a lot to learn, but we can learn more from animals than from each other sometimes. I think we're, so. Yeah. yeah. So bat is a strange species. <laughs> okay, so um, akin to the Buddhist belief in reincarnation in Central America, bat is the symbol of rebirth. Oh wow! Wow. The, the bat has for centuries been a treasured medicine of the Aztec, the Toltec, the Tulcan, and the Mayan peoples. Tolucan, Maya. Okay, bat embraces the idea of shamanistic death. The ritual death of the healer is steeped in secrets and highly involved initiation rites. Shaman death is the symbolic death of the initiate to the old ways of life and personal identity. 
The initiation that brings the right to heal and to be called a shaman is necessarily preceded by a ritual death. Most of the rituals are brutally hard on the body, mind, and spirit. In light of today's standards, it can be very difficult to find a person who can take the abuse and come through it with their balance intact. Oh, isn't that what we were talking about today? Mm, I think so. Oh, yeah. Fancy that, eh? Okay. So the me, <laughs> tripping me up again. <laughs> so the basic idea of ancient initiations was to break down all the former notions of self that wow. were held by the shaman to be. This could entail brutal tests of physical strength and fight psychic ability and having every emotional button pushed hard. So taunting and spitting and were on the initiate was common and taught for them to endure the duress with humility and fortitude. Then the final initiation step was to be buried in the earth for one day and to be reborn without the former ego in the morning. Yeah, yeah. the ancient rituals around this shamanistic rebirthing are intense, yeah. really intense. So this very this ritual was also similar to the night of fear practiced by the North American um, natives. And in that ritual, the shaman to be was sent to a certain location to dig their own grave and spend the night in the womb of Mother Earth. So there's wow. kind of a symbol, I mean, a, uh, you know, a common understanding of what this rebirth is about going in you know to the isn't that like what we call in this third world the dark night of the soul like we very have our similar. Own... Mm -hmm. yeah. very very our similar own. you know where you get into that Jungian concept of going yeah. you're in your dark night of your soul you're into your deep darkness your grave and, and if and we could probably move our way through that deep darkness by by tapping into our inner healer that we all have and connecting ourselves to Mother Earth, yep. which we all have that opportunity to. And I really feel that if we can take all that psychology and then bring it back into our body and put our body back in the earth instead of keeping everything up here, yep. we'll find a much more transformative healing, yep. you know, deeper. The Mother Earth's energy is so powerful. When you put your feet in that earth and you have the, the your healing sensation, you're something to heal for you and you put your but you consciously put those feet in the earth, that powerful force of energy shoots up into your body and you feel that connection between earth and mother earth and human, you know, it's, it's, it's so, so, powerful, so powerful. Yeah. Um, so uh, they would dig their own grave, spend the night in the womb, uh, totally alone with the mounds of the grave covered by a blanket. Darkness and the sounds of the animals quickly confront the initiate with his or her own fears, right? And as, as the darkness of the grave has its place in this ritual, so does the cave of the bat. Hanging upside down is a symbol for learning to transpose your former self into a newborn being. Being, This is also a position the babies assume when they enter the world through the womb of the woman. It's also the hanged man in the tarot, right? The beginning of the journey, right? So. If bat has appeared today, it symbolizes the need for your ritualistic death of some way of life that no longer suits your old, your new growth pattern. I saw a bat this morning. I saw a bat fly this morning with my cat. Sure, I see them at night. So what's what you're doing, you're already doing this. You're talking about setting boundaries, right? letting go of that old way of behaving whole way. Yep. Whole new and, way of and becoming a, a whole new person with your self-love. You're doing your self-love ritual. You know, you put yourself in to such a deep, dark nothingness, right? By letting go of everything and just traveling in a little car with your little butterball cat, right? And, and, you know your fears come back and then you know the relationship came back to teach you to let that go again and how dark that got so fast yeah. that didn't take 14 years that took a couple months yeah. so yeah. that tells you that your healing process is going beautifully albeit 
it must hurt quite often. You know, that is not to diminish the difficulty yeah. or the pain or the fear or anything. Thank you. Um, so this can mean a time of letting go of old habits and assuming Woo! position in life that prepares you for rebirth. And in some cases, initiation. In every case, bat signals rebirth of some part of yourself or the death of old patterns. If you resist your destiny, it can be a long drawn out or painful death, yes. The universe is always asking you to grow and become your future self. So to do so, you must let all the other stuff go, right? Let it go and allow yourself to rebirth and appreciate. So here's a little strength card for you to carry with you this week. We can all appreciate the strength and the beauty of the bat. And also, guys, the boundaries, that's a new, I'm sure for a lot of us, it's quite a new thing to really practice putting those boundaries into yourself for the benefit of yourself. And generally, people are not going to shun you. It's going to be quite surprising. Right. And so, you know, I am taking all this information in from you, Jemima, and from the bat. And uh, so I will um, actually write down some things I have to take care of this week. And really, it really does come down to boundaries. My discomfort and my difficulty has really been about the fact that I've let my boundaries get so completely um, dissolved in places. And so, yes, and I will take- You are so worthy, Darcy. You are so worthy of not, um, like not having people walk on you or whatever it may be. Like, if you're so worthy. You're such a loving, beautiful, selfless soul. Me. Like when you put your boundaries up, the universe is gonna give you tenfold back. So watch out, watch out. <laughs> On that note, guys, we're going to head off. We love you. We love you. We love you. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Please do. You know, the more we get people out there, the more we can come together as a community. And if you have any questions, please ask. Otherwise, we'll be back here next week. We love you. Yeah, send us a message. Send us a comment. And we will address that. We will talk about you. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye, Das. Love you too. Bye.